Okay, so, all right. So the uh, go into sort of the bad news. Okay, the bad news. Bad news. <laughs> uh, like, <coughs> uh, so. All right. So, all right. so going going to the heavy news. Okay, mm. so, uh, like, okay, yeah. so. All right. So, if I you know if you're a, if you really want to be like a, a, a student, a very advanced spiritual student, um, so you've got to sort of see. Now, generally speaking, on a on a certain level, I would say that guilt. Like, of course, we also agree. You know, the guilt. If I hold guilt, like I stole your donuts, uh, you know, for several lifetimes, there's going to be a, like a wadge of guilt, yeah, and that guilt is going to attract punishment. It's going to pick up some kind of belief system from the world to be a punishment, because even though my ego might think it's getting away, you didn't see me take your donuts. There will be guilt taken on board, mm -hmm. because I have, you know. We're all connected, so if I steal your donuts, on some level I'm going to be picking up guilt. Even if I'm not aware of it, I am picking up guilt because mm -hmm. I've stolen your donuts. Mm -hmm. So if I wedge this huge guilt, now if I have a little bit of guilt, I might get a cold because I've stolen your donuts. But if I you know, stole your donuts, made you bankrupt, you know, your, bank, your bakery went bankrupt, you couldn't feed your family, you know, and, uh, and, and then, and then your, your home got repossessed and I, and I saw that you sort of sitting out on the street, you know, in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of guilt, you know. So then I'm going to have so much guilt. So I'll be waiting to pick up a belief system that corresponds with the level of guilt I'm holding. Mm -hmm. So I might not get a cold, I might get cancer. Or, mm -hmm. or I might get, you know, some kind of life-threatening uh, incurable illness, you know, because I'm holding so much guilt. I deserve to be punished severely. For having stolen your donuts, or if it was a mild guilt, I might pick up like a headache. I might start getting like, uh, you know, those migraine headaches, you know, uh, mm -hmm. regularly, to for, as a form of punishment. Now, as you start clearing stuff, clearing your guilt, feeling the feelings out, counseling beliefs, forgiving people, forgiving yourself, praying for forgiveness for God for the one in you who did that to others. Um, then generally you'll find you'll start to feel happier. Your illnesses, especially if you're doing, I cancel my belief in my, you know, headache or cancer or whatever it is, you'll start to get alleviation. Um, there, there's different things as well. You've got to understand uh, what your ego perceives and what your spirit has chosen are not necessarily the same thing. Um, <clears throat> now, if you're an advanced spiritual student, um, uh, you, you do not know what your spirit wants for this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Your ego may want an easy lifetime, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, God, like uh, I'm going to be a good spiritual student, I'm going to pray for everyone, and can I just win the lottery and just retire to the Bahamas? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, this is what my ego wants, you know. But mm -hmm. spiritually you've chosen, you may have chosen mm -hmm. to be of maximum love and service and mm -hmm. to sacrifice your life for the highest good for mm -hmm. concerned. That might be what your spirit's chosen. So, uh, and I would say that would override what your ego wants. You know, like, you know, I've suffered enough, you know, I've prayed for the last three years for everyone, you know, I've been giving sandwiches to the homeless people. Like, can I have no illnesses and win the lottery and sort of retire? I've been a good spiritual student. Thank you, God. So, and then you go, well, how comes I'm still having a tough time? Mm -hmm. And that's because spiritually, okay, so you've got, you've got to understand this thing. It's not going to be, I have to put a warning on this video. So you've got to understand there's my karma. So I can get through my karma and my guilt. Okay, so that's like clearing my individual guilt and, and belief systems that I've taken on from the collective. But as you start to get more advanced, you spiritually may want, not necessarily at an ego level, but at a deeper spiritual level, you may also want to clear group karma, family karma, even country karma or even global karma, yeah. Mm. So you then take on board, uh, you then take on board other stuff, other people's stuff, shall we say, depending on the level that you want to clear. And I'd say your ego may not be so happy about this, but you may be doing it anyway because you may have a deeper spiritual contract or a deeper spiritual calling to do that. So even though you're clearing a lot of your stuff, I mean, it's not as simple as I've just cleared my individual stuff so I'm going to be happy, joyous and free. Because actually, you could say, yes, I can just focus on clearing my individual stuff and I won't be left alone. Just give me a, a nice house in Bahamas and I'm just going to be on the, on, the, on the beach every day. Or 
you may willingly or spiritually or unwillingly even be taking on clearing other people's stuff as well. Now you might be working on your, on your family stuff, you know, um, so, or you might love your pet dog, Rufus, who's going through, you know, some, has, has arthritis. So there's kind of like something deeper wants to clear it for him mm. or take it on board. Or you might see suffering in the world or suffering in the political scene. And so you might not be consciously aware of this, but you're wanting to like clear that stuff. I think that's the thing with Dr. Hugh Len. Now, Dr. Hugh Len would be someone, I only quote him so much because it's some this modern day example. I think there's been many mystics, but they've been unrecognized. You know, the work that Jesus did, the work that Buddha did, you, you haven't seen it, so it's not been documented. So I always talk about Dr. Hugh Len because it's got a concrete example. But every mystic is, mm. like Hawkins says, one enlightened teacher is clearing the negativity of about 70 million people on the planet. Just by having Buddha alive, people are not committing suicide, the crime rate's going down, people are feeling happier. He doesn't take any credit for it, no one gives him money for it, but just that light radiating out. Now, Dr. Hugh Len is just one example of a mystic clearing a whole prison of violent criminals out. Now, now you could be a thing of like, well, I'm just going to clear my own individual stuff out, so I'm going to be happy and, you know, and thank you very much. But, you know, sometimes, and as you get to higher levels of clearing, you're automatically going into the oneness. You're not, I mean, in truth, there is no separation. So... I make it sound quite simplistic, like, and it's true, I mean, it's good to see it simplistic. Like, I have my individual karma and my individual belief systems in separation to me, as an, uh, in separation. But the more evolved I get, the more I feel connected to, to, to everyone. And therefore, there can be deeper callings to clear. Also, like, let's say uh, I get quite evolved at some point, and then I have some afflictions in my body. But also, if I'm going to clear stuff, I mean, I could clear my stuff, I could clear something else in the world. So that then becomes a choice. Also, some people like clearing stuff in the world, some, t some people like going deeper within. Now, if I'm going deeper within, you know, letting go of more identification of the world, if, if the body goes blind, it doesn't really matter. I don't know if that makes sense, because I'm just like, the world is meaningless. So you're going into a deeper mystical state. So what happens mm -hmm. to the body when it falls down and goes deeper? Mm -hmm. Or you might go into a more outwardly avatar type uh, uh, enlightened thing where you're, you're there's a calling to clear the collective karma mm -hmm. you know be an avatar so so then you know it's like intuitively one is one is clearing different things which to a spiritual another person may think well why don't you deal with your blindness but you don't, you don't know what, whether they're going deeper inwards or whether they're clearing different stuff or whether it's mm -hmm. meaningless you can't really see a deeper picture uh, so those would be some of the things uh, to do. So you, it's hard to see unless you have mm. calibration techniques as to why it's not clearing. Mm. Um, also, just to answer a slightly different question on avoiding stuff or a uh, spiritual bypass or something like that. Like if, uh, if I'm a Buddhist monk and I'm afraid of seeing the donuts uh, in the local bakery, because if I don't, don't see the local ba donuts being baked, if I go blind, then I'm going to get to enlightenment quicker, you see. So I'll go blind rather than see the donuts. But um, is that spiritual bypass? Well, I think, you know, one of the things is like, God, I would say, my view, I mean, you can argue it from different angles, mm. and, and, and it'd be right, but everything is intention and motive with God, you know. Like, I would say, you could say, like, God knows my heart, you know, and what is my intention? And there's different ways to get to God. You know, there, there's the way of the mystic and there's the way, the way of selfless service. There's slightly different pathways, but they're both pathways to God. So I could like, you know, like Mother Teresa is a great sort of, I think in, the, in people's eyes would be that of loving service. You know, whereas Ramana Maharishi, I'd say is more like a classical mystic. You know, like what you see is just a projection in your head and it's not real. Uh, they, they both are slightly different, but their, their intention is very deep to get to the grace of God. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, if my intention is to not see temptation to get in oneness with God, and it's a very deep intention, um, that can be of great grace, even if you go blind. I think that he could be resonating at a very, very high vibration. Sometimes if the motive is slightly different, um, or a karmic lesson is such that you have to go through it in a different manner, then it can be a spiritual bypass, in which case it will keep coming back over and over again, because the universe goes, you can't get away that easily. Mm. You know, so, um, but sometimes you might, it might seem like that, because you know, God knows your intention, and you become like a blind, enlightened teacher. I think there were some blind, some blind ones who got quite high as well. Um, so, uh, so it just depends. You, it's hard to say from the outside, mm. but uh, but when you when you've got a deep intention to get to God, like God knows that, and and sometimes even if you and, and God may not see it as a bypass, you know, it's for some some go there in a cave and they become enlightened teachers, and not necessarily that they're bypassing. They come to a certain point where they want to leave everything mm. and just be one with God, and that's not necessarily always a spiritual bypass. Yeah. Um, and then sometimes it could be. It's like, you know, I can't stand noisy neighbours, so I'm going to go to that street over there and you've got another noisy neighbour. Then you move to another block of houses and you've got another noisy neighbour. And it's like, God goes, nope, your intention is not pure. You've got to get noisy neighbours and you can't spiritually bypass noisy neighbours. Mm.